Hey everyone, welcome back for more EXO series content. Today's video, we're going to discuss who is better. Is it Dorka, FC April, or FC Talia? But before that, if you want updated EXO series content, please hit the subscribe button down below. Hey guys, welcome again to my channel. So today we're going to discuss who is the best healer in our current meta right now. So if you can see in here, we have Dorka versus FC April versus FC Talia. But honorable mentions goes to FC Anastasia and FC Lepen for our healers. Um, there have been a lot of questions addressed to me in terms of who is actually better, who can I recommend, who is better with what, and now we're all going to discuss them. Also, please take note that there's an ongoing, um, what do you call this? There's an ongoing banner for Synergy in which you can choose FC April. So it's now a good opportunity if uh, you feel that FC April can help your team, now is the right time to, to summon for her. Okay, so let, let, let's move on to their stats so basically for their stats this is just a tail of the tape on who is actually better so for hp um it's fc talia with the high stat um because she is of a support class of hero for attack it's going to be dorka because she is of attack class um, for defense, it, it, it goes to FC Talia for below average attack, uh, below average stat. For hit, it's actually the same. For dodge, it goes to FC Dorka. Uh, sorry, for Dorka, I wish I had a, we had a better FC for Dorka, aside from the orange one that we have now, so that she can actually, you know, um, be better than what she is right now. Okay. So for dodge again, she has the best above because it's above average. For crit hit, it's the same for all three. For block, it's the same for all three. And one glaring stat would be your attack speed, which means is their turn in terms of uh, one round. So Dorka has the high attack speed. I think she has 116 versus um versus fc talia and fc april which are support characters and they're usually slow or very slow okay let's go to the feature for each hero so for dorka um she is again a chaos attack type hero so for her pros she has passing passive healing soul bond so soul bond is grants allies with less attack than self than with soul bond mark and heals 30 percent of mission missing health every turn reduces magic damage taken by 30 percent as well so aside from her passive healing um she also gives mana to all allies and um also she has actually a very fast attack speed at 116 base this is based on le her level 75 and obviously this can also be increased so she is one of the ver the the fastest attack speed in the game um her attack speed doesn't matter in terms of soul bond because soul bond is passive it triggers every turn um for her attack speed this is mostly used um for her s1 and s2 so her s1 is actually good with her bind and also a damage over time effect so bind is actually bind is actually um not gaining any mana for two turns so this is courtesy of her unleash potential while for her s2 which already has piercing damage once you unleash her potential it also gains an additional damage of 1000 for piercing damage okay and the good thing about Dorka, she can be used in any team. Right now, she's actually used in... She can be used in in Wasted Red, uh, North Von Frosty. And she can, you, you can really splash her around in, in any team. Okay, for the cons, I'll, I'll go back to in terms of her usage in any team. The drawback of Dorka is that... Um, I'll go back to Soul Bond. Soul Bond can only be triggered if Dorka has the highest attack stat. So if um, you have to make sure that when you transfer her or you, you have a team comp, she has the highest attack speed. 
what if for example you have another hero which also has a good passive that needs um needs her to have highest attack speed as well uh sorry yeah highest attack speed is uh, sorry highest attack stat as well so the comparison will be with uh, with Bathory because if you put Dorka and Bathory together in one team, for their niche potential, to, as for their um, passive to to basically cover everybody, they have to have the best attack stat uh, so that they can cover everyone. If Dorka is the best attack stat, um, Bathory cannot give her tranquil. And vice versa. So if battery has the best attack stat, um, Dorka cannot heal her. So it's actually a a what they call this. Sometimes a drawback, but you know you have to give a sacrifice on who you want to prioritize versus the other. So that is the con of of Dorka first, and also she has a problem in raising her attack stat. Because she doesn't really have right now a, f a good fate core. She has a orange fate core which doesn't count. So basically the problem is that um, it's hard for her to go above um, the other heroes which have fate cores. Like for example, again, uh, Bathory, if, if you want to have her, have, her uh, have a more higher attack stat, uh, with her with versus battery it's actually down to you limiting the attack stat of battery versus you pushing the attack stat of Dorka so that's it again she has to have a you know a at least a black fate core for or a what they call this or a gold fate core I, I put there no fate core because more or less the the orange fate core is actually just for aesthetics so and also it's really hard to invest in the signature force of Brun because due to the lack of years under Brun Nation. Because normally once when we um, try to invest on a specific signature force, we're actually um, weighing things. So the needs of the one of the, sorry the needs of many outweigh the needs of one. So, in other words, um, the chances of you uh, leveling up her signature force is actually very slim. Or Brun would just remain as a secondary faction versus to your main faction. That is actually what happened. What is happening right now with my team is actually just I have her at level 1.3. And I cannot really favor leveling up her signature force versus Wasted Red because Wasted Red is my main faction. So um again so those are the those are the cons in which you uh, in which dorka has for or as a hero so let's proceed to fc talia so fc talia um she is actually a support and a magical type um hero and for her pros, she has increased defense of all allies by 20%. So this is in her passive. She also has good, very, very good passive healing, um, which uh, are Overturned Fate and Rewind. So Overturned Fate is actually two times around when an ally is, is damaged and their health is below 30%, heals the health of one ally with the most missing health by 60% of of maximum health okay for rewind it's also when the health of an ally marked with reversion fails below 50% heals target by 30% of the target's maximum health and removes all reversion marks so the reversion marks actually is is uh, being given by Talia based on her S2 okay so the good thing about Talia is that she is really focused solely more or less on healing. So that is her forte. She actually is so annoying when 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 I usually encounter her on, on the other side because a lot of heals trigger, especially for her passive. Um, and also, she also has reduced damage to all allies by 30% once you try to um, fully maximize her stamina tree for unleash potential 
and also she can be used in any team that's good that's what's good about her most of her usage is more on greenland but she can be splashed in any team composition um because she doesn't have any character or hero def uh, dependencies so she is actually a very all-around healer as well very good healer and very good uh, what they call this very good um, character to have and very annoying as well so for her cons the most the most um i think negative about her is she has a very slow attack speed at 33 so base at level 75 the reason why is that this is very bad although she is she is best to go last but definitely sometimes before she reaches her turn most of or most or some of your heroes are already dead so that is why that is why at least try to make her make her attack speed higher try to um try to what they call this try to make sure that you you add to her attack speed so that she would you know at least go up higher a bit um although again she would be best to be last but um it, she should not be the slowest of all the heroes including the enemies on the other side so again attack speed um a, a little tweak should be enough for her because uh, it's also bad that she goes before your other heroes just make sure that your other heroes are have good defense have good health to survive until fc talia's turn so that she could heal as well also um fc talia is actually good if you have fc iris on the team because you can use her s2 um on her first turn so basically fc iris uh, hastens her s2 especially if if you your 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 other team members are actually badly damaged already you need to pull off her s2 for her massive massive heal cleanse uh and debuffs okay so i i forgot to mention for s1 as well so she has prophecy of decline so damage she actually gives herself damage reduction prophecy of decline deals damage but also heals one random ally as well and damage reduction to self okay i forgot to mention that a while ago so s2 her s2 is actually so annoying that you have to take her out as much as possible before before she heals her entire team okay so cons to continue very slow attack speed and also the one thing that i've noticed with fc talia is that she is actually very vulnerable to nullify heal especially that she doesn't bring much versatility to the table aside from um a ton of heals uh once you disable you know um, her healing capabilities she doesn't bring a lot again to the team so if she encounters fc ramji uh, most of her healing spells would be disabled so again this is a drawback of a full you know full what they call this full full heal you know if if, if if a hero's kit is just you know centered on all heals that is also the drawback so once uh the enemy has a counter for you so i'm sorry you'll have to you know you have to be contented with taking out that hero uh first before uh you know that hero can land nullify heal especially for fc ramji fc ramji by the way is actually fast in attack speed that is why you have to kill him um so that his nullify heal won't you know won't affect um your heroes and your team when you're bringing fc talia okay so the next would be you have your fc april so for her support she is also a magical support character so for her for her pros she has sound fever increased attack speed of back row allies by five so this is not really that significant you know if you're if you're you know this is just you know just an add-on probably small add-on but this triggers because of this heartened and this heartened is triggered because of fc rachel 
And the condition for this heart end is also FC Rachel should have the highest attack stat versus the heroes on the other side. Okay, so this heart end is, is affected um, in the enemies on the other side. So also she heals 100% of all allies upon dying, which is actually kind of good. Um, she also has fan service buff to all allies. This is actually also a triggered by this hearten. So fan service is basically um, it's an overtime effect. So this hearten front row allies receive 40% increased damage and all damage against the targets are, are applied as piercing damage. This is one of the, the best um, passive abilities that FC April has. So her, so her fan service. But again, this is again based on if um, FC Rachel has the highest attack stat versus your your enemies. Okay, so Little Star increased survivability for April. So Little Star is at the beginning of a round reduces received damage by 10% for each living ally, except the caster reduces up to 40%. So reduce up to 40% damage if you know you have. All, all four other allies alive so that's it so for s1 um s1 gives you aoe silence again this is based on if they have disheartened or not this is actually a very good skill because um silence uh, makes your enemies use their basic attack only they cannot use their s1 or their s2 and for her s2 she has a massive healing um, heals all allies by 90% of own maximum health cleanses all debuffs and damage over time so she has a cleanse as well and heals 10% additional for each mana on the target so again a massive massive heal if your allies have mana on them the con for April is that very slow attack speed again so she has to at least you know increase her attack speed base uh, again, this is based on level 75 attack speed. So so that she you know um she she can actually try to catch up in healing and none of her you know none of her other allies dies before she heals them. So again, it's good to have FC Iris on the team so that she can use her S2, her massive healing on her first turn, and relies on Rachel for this heart. And that's actually her drawback her curse but once you have fc rachel she's all good as long as fc rachel has the best attack stat again fc rachel or lenombe has to have a good signature force for rachel's attack stat to also go up so more or less these are the what they call this the the, the comparisons that i have for you guys in terms of um who is who is better i think that that um for the three of them i don't think that um the other is better than the other you know um one is better than the other but it's more on where will you use them where will what what is your plan for them what is your team composition around them that your decision will be based on investing let's say you don't really want to invest on all three of them you just want to invest on one healer all around healer then you get either um dorka or fc talia to focus on if you have lenombe built up you actually use fc april as well if you have greenland built up you also use um fc talia again f i think if you want to focus on solely healing so it's fc talia if you want to focus on again on on a utility of other skills you can either get dorka or fc april so those are basically my tips for healers and who to choose who to bring your team and more or less who to develop or to level up or who to how to really f focus on because more or less resources are very rare and you can't really focus on a lot of signature especially the signature force you can't really focus on all of them so you really have to choose wisely on ho who you want to bring for your team anyway guys this is actually 
a nice video to talk about um I, I hope you have some takeaways in this if you have comments and suggestions please write them down in the comment section below also for those who are watching this video please do subscribe and help and support my channel most of the viewers that i have around 85 percent have not subscribed yet so please do this helps my channel a lot so basically this is the warden saying to you enjoy your weekend take care stay safe and i'm out